For the Brooklyn Psychedelic Society, um, Hamilton Morris of Pharmacopia and also an author and amateur scientist, DIY scientist. Uh, not DIY, but I do some research. Cool. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> Owen of Maxi Cohen Studios, and can we give her a warm welcome of applause? <laughs> Sarah for joining. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I did. I could be a terrible. Well, I've been telling people's names and then applause, like because um, people are going to have the presupposition coming okay. to something that Bart oh, wasn't done explaining that people. <laughs> Sarah doesn't actually do anything, so we know. <laughs> she has an excellent comedy show on drugs of mainly the psychedelic variety called Drug Test uh, at Caveat. It is once a month, approximately. Mm -hmm. It was. Very good show, very good shows, there's multiple. Last they did it was on psilocybin mushrooms, <coughs> and which Hamilton was uh, also a panel member of. And it's a caveat, so I highly recommend coming That's out. May 25th. Yes, May 25th. May, Thank you, Jay. May 25th. Yeah. At caveat. And last but not least, what was your name, sir? Um, Justin. Give a warm welcome to Justin. <laughs> I felt like it was my duty to share the heart healing medicine because it definitely saved my life because I was on a dark path of self-destructive delusional fucking suicidal uh, path and then it opened me up to be more beautiful and working through the light to find my inner peace and happiness and I'm just grateful I'm still here to share with you all because some of you might have been going through the same things I was going through and I'm just here to share the message and the entire experience through my art form, and I felt I felt like this process of cyanotype is sim somewhat alchemical, the way it's created through the elemental process of the sunlight exposing on the handmade paper with the uh, with the cyanotype uh, process, and that lends itself very well to the psychedelic experience because it feels like we're opening up portals of love. And when you're working with the medicine, you feel into that space of love. And I just wanted to share that through the artwork and of, of these of these people because they welcome me into their community with their with their nonprofits. And I wanted to respect these people because they're indigenous. And I wanted to share that love and appreciation because they gave that to me. And I just wanted to give that back to them and, sh and share that. Thank you. Um, thank you. be San Pedro since you both ha may not have experience with it but I'm just curious on your perspectives on how these medicines work through you and how they help you so we don't we know not to abuse them to respect them and to use them in the right way and what would be a proper definition for medicinal so I'm just opening up the dialogue for that uh, I can try and take those first so one of the reasons I first got interested in um, psychedelic drugs generally. I went to an ayahuasca ceremony after reading about ayahuasca in a New Yorker article several years ago. <laughs> so very holy reasons. Um, and I, um, I went up to the shaman after a certain point and I had had a full dose and I had said, I want more. Do you have more? I'm not feeling it. And he said, why? And in the moment he said, why? I realized that it had not matched my expectations. I had expected to be writhing around on the ground, vomiting, seeing jaguars, and my mom in the form of a tarantula. And that didn't happen. And I was really upset by that. I was disappointed. And I realized that I'd shown up to the ceremony because I wanted to be in pain. And it was a strange form of medicine to be shown that you had actually chosen pain. But it was the most important revelation of my whole life. It explained to me so many actions I'd taken and actually helped me to eventually cure my depression and a long series of later moves. But that's, that's the way that this medicine has worked for me. In the realm in which I uh, came up in this work, where the idea of a psychedelic was that you could lose the framework of time and space and, and, and actually lose 
connection to reality. Whereas with ayahuasca, you know, again, you can be in another dimensional reality, but you're navigating there, but you're not, uh, you, you can come back to reality. You know where reality is, you know what's real. Unless, of course, you've had a psychotic break, which is also possible. The advice would be, you know, be as responsible as you possibly can when you look at the history of the way drugs are made illegal. Typically, at least one person has to die from taking that drug before it is made illegal. So, you know, do your best not to be that person that died taking the drug. It's, it's always good. Try not to use it irresponsibly in such a way that it hurts the drug as well as yourself, because although most people don't seem to care about the drugs, they can be damaged and there's very people, very few people that defend them. I mean, you think about how these things are so easily lost for scientific research, and it's truly disastrous, and it can happen just because one you know, teenager buys something off the internet, doesn't measure the dose carefully enough, takes too much, and then people incorrectly assume that the drug must be dangerous. So just to be very careful and cautious, but in terms of, yeah, how it's all going to be integrated into a capitalist market, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you guys think we're headed in the right direction? Um, I do. I think that um, we've largely, I, I'm an optimist. Um, I think we have largely learned a lot of the mistakes of the past. Like uh, when MDMA was largely being used sort of on the rave scene, there was a really great quote about, um, let's make sure we don't repeat the same mistakes of counterculture. Now the person who said that was Timothy Leary. <laughs> but in a way, who better to know than Timothy Leary? Um, and I think that the second time around, it's a little bit less cataclysmic. It's a little bit less like angry at the older generation and a little bit more focused on intergenerational healing. So I think the changes are slower and incremental, so they're harder to see, but they're still there. So easy to see, oh, ayahuasca. Um, let's go to Peru and do ayahuasca. It's, it's on the news, let's see what that's about. But like, that could be damaging. You, know, you don't know what the shaman's brew is made out of. You don't know who that shaman is. And like, how do you do that in a responsible way when all you're seeing on the news is this new medicine that's indigenous and it's healing these things, how do you know where to go? Like, is there a resource that tells you the, the, the right thing to do when it comes to these things, especially when it's on the news and being trending? If you were to buy a new pair of boots and go hiking without having worn them first, people would say, you're crazy. You are asking for blisters. What were you doing? You know you have to break them in first. You're out of your mind. But if you say that you bought a bar of chocolate from a stranger that contains an unmeasured amount of presumably psilocybin-containing mushrooms, but who knows what, and you don't know, never asked what the dose was, so you ate the whole bar, that's considered, like, not that crazy. I think it's very crazy. Yeah, you, have to, yeah. you have to really take it seriously, put a lot of energy into researching it, and if you don't know, like, I, I simply would not eat that chocolate. I wouldn't. You don't have to. Find, grow your own. Figure out a way to do it in such a way that you have some degree of understanding of what you're consuming, and you know the dose and the identity of the material. I mean, it's really important, absolutely crucial, if you want to approach this responsibly. So, that's the first in this question of how to know what, I don't know how anyone would know whether or not they should do it. That's not an answer I can, the question I can answer. But if you are going to do it, please put some thought into <laughs> ensuring that you know what you're doing. And I think people put too much emphasis on is it spiritual or is it non-spiritual? Is it religious? Is it not religious? Is it serious or is it recreational? That's all fine. But please try to know what it is you're taking and the dose that you're consuming. because. And, and that's also been why, yeah.